Joining us now, Dr Tanvir Ahmed, a psychologist and Sky News contributor. Good to talk to you again, uh, Doctor. So, uh, this, these are tough times. A lot of people are hurting. Uh, uh, and we were talking just before the break about how down in the dumps many are feeling frustrated because they don't really know where all of this effort's uh, leading to. Uh, I know it's not going to work for everybody, but some tools. How do, I mean, there's fight and flight. How do people survive the drive, if you like, out of this coronavirus? Look, Gary, we're living in essentially a big psychological experiment, uh, not just with our kind of individual levels uh, being kind of stuck indoors day to day, minimum uh, kind of difficult, minimum physical interaction, but we're also going through an experiment in political authority, our relationship with our politicians, to what extent we can retain a sense of obedience. So there's sort of multiple psychological experiments going on at the moment. Look, in terms of a psychological level now, many things aren't any different to, say, the April lockdown, where we're routine creatures. And a key thing now is to try and set up new but healthy routines within the lockdown setting. So whether it's daily exercise, whether it's uh, you know trying to eat at regular times, whether it's changing clothes in order to kind of set boundaries between your work self and your uh, home self, uh, including having different spaces. So trying to set up a bit of boundary, that also helps psychologically. Also setting up regular meetings. Now, all of us were probably flushed with work-related meetings, you know, webinars, et cetera, and many of us are getting sick of the Zoom meetings, but we're not actually as good as setting up, like, friendship meetings, and not just with individuals, but trying to set up group meetings that's one of the key things we're actually missing, some of that group contact. And again, it can be, you know, a bit limited on, on Zoom and webinars, but it's still better than better than uh, nothing, I think. Look, I think we're really, it's going to test the, test, uh, test the limits in Melbourne. Uh, look, when we've looked at past studies, and Joe will know about this too, a little bit about this too, we've, we've had studies in the past from SARS, and they were based in Canada, but they were over, say, a month or two uh, lockdown, and then we saw, you know, signs of anxiety, even trauma, uh, usual one, depressed mood, using more alcohol, and many of those, you know, we're all familiar with. But what we're going through now is actually uncharted territory, where you've had a lockdown, that we're out, and suddenly we've had a lockdown again. So it's really going to test test our limits, and there's bound to be a degree of despair, as you were alluding to. So more than ever, we need that human interaction. But I also think people, if not being disobedient, and we've seen in Victoria where sometimes they have overstepped, and I feel like already, uh, the panel may have already discussed this, they may reset some of these things. So I don't think people should be unquestioningly obedient. They should be kind of challenging uh, some of the lockdown where it may have overstepped. And we know Daniel Andrews has history there. For example, that rule where he had where partners couldn't visit each other. You know, that was challenged and it was seen as uh, impractical and, uh, and not viable and it was changed. So I'll talk about an experiment, Gary. It's a famous experiment in the 70s and it was really an experiment in authority and it was called the milgram experiment and it was about where you would have white coated people overseeing uh people in experiments giving electric shocks and because they were told they were allowed to give electric shocks they would often give the subjects like le almost lethal electric shocks and they thought it was acceptable so it was a very powerful experiment in authority and it, you know the nazi generals even used the same excuse you know i was just taking orders but what they found there was direct commands became less and less effective. In some ways, that's partly what's happening yeah. in Victoria. Daniel Andrews has a very dictatorial style. Go do this, do this, or people are going to die. This is really going to be tested in, in the coming weeks. His style of leadership will come under great tension, I think. Uh, and this is, for me, this is actually one of the most interesting experiments going on in Victoria. I certainly hope it goes well. So I, I must say, I'm you know not wishing ill on uh, on the state or Daniel uh, Andrews, but I, I'm generally worried about that relationship in, in terms of political authority and obedience in, in that state. Well, I'm sure that a lot of people in Victoria, there's, there's a group of people who are just the Dan fans. Anything he says, if he says jump, uh, it's, it's Simon Says, as far as they're concerned. They'll, they'll do whatever he asks. And then there's people who are... Indeed, very much so, fighting that authority. And, and as long as that debate's going on, it may well actually help people who've got feelings either way to know that they're not the only ones feeling like, like that. I think there's that sense of isolation. We all have a role in trying to defeat. That's what I think you're so, saying. So, so, Gary, I guess, interestingly, while there's no question there'll be, uh, you know, so much psychological distress, there, there are portions of people that are actually feeling better in this current state 
because the threat is more shared. So there's a lot of people with anxiety disorders where they often feel like their distress is entirely individualised. So at the moment where we, we have yeah. a shared threat, so to some extent people feel more connected, and I think that's something worth tapping into. So, you know, there's all these people who've never spoken to their neighbours before, but suddenly they're completely dependent upon each other. So there's an element that we are yeah. going through a phase in history where uh, I guess that whole focus on kind of individual gratification uh, is being tempered. So that's one of the potential positives, and, and that's something people can, uh, I think, tap into um, and, uh, and build stronger group ties, both digitally and to a lesser extent physically within your own geography. So in some ways it's, it's, uh, it's recalibrating. You know, many of us have lost geographical communities. Uh, I think that may get a bit of a reset too through, through uh, this sort of period. At least I hope so. Yeah, so so reset. Go and find, go and find that long lost friend. Say, hey, look, we're going to do a, a hook up on Zoom, have a Zoom party, or whatever it might happen to be. I call it find aggressive friendship. Gary. We're going through a period where we need to be friendship. aggressively okay. friendly. <laughs> Yeah, it's a bit like that. I went to a function the other night. There were 50 people only in the room. Everyone was social distanced, but everyone was nervous. It was the first time they'd gathered since uh, the lockdown back in April here in Brisbane. Um, and it was extraordinary, the experiment. Nobody was handshaking and some were saying, oh, blow that, I'll give you a hug and all this sort of stuff. But, but most people were following the rules, I'm happy to say. Uh, so... So people have kind of reassessed their interrelationships with others uh, and are slowly starting to get out. But in places like Victoria, it's all back to the beginning again. It's it's despairing stuff. Look, Dan, I do hope good it to goes have you well. On. We'll I... have you on again. Yeah. Absolutely. Thanks, yeah. Gary. Yeah.